the Kings Point Association for having us here to showcase our orchids and perfume fragrances that I've made from the, was inspired from the orchids, the fragrant orchids. The perfumes are over on that table. Okay, so as you know, we're gifted with the beautiful weather in South Florida. Even though it gets cold at times, the orchids love that. They like a little nip, a little cold nip to boost growth and also to spike. So um, we are, you know, can afford to have a wide or grow a wide range of orchids here because of that beautiful warm weather. The, the orchids, they love that. Even though, you know, we can have some indoor, they still get the sunlight through the windows. So that's a plus for us here in South Florida. And as you know, orchids, they can adapt to just about any situation except when it gets cold below 65 degrees, they're not so happy. And um, they, Orchids are really from the wild, as we may say. So many times we take them in our homes and we try to pet them or in our gardens and give them beautiful surrounding, but really they like to be, they like to be free, especially the, the bandits with these, air, these are airy roots, as you may know. These roots, they're airy, so they live off air, you know, they, they, even though they may be mounting on, mounted on trees or stubs or things like these, they're not getting any supplement from it. They just like to be cling to it. And um, the media we put in them, sometimes I use chip barks and whatever is available that's reasonable, I use in it because they just need to be clean. The roots, the area roots, they just need to be clinged to whatever media. The media is the chips that you use in it. So they just need to be clinged onto something to grow. They're, the nutrients they get is really the fertilizers. And if you, you know, every now and then you have to use fungicide treatment on them. Mm -hmm. Because they may get sick from overwatering or the cold weather. And sometimes the heat may burn them also. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they they are finicky that way. So, but it's just they just need something to be clean to, to for the roots to grow. And um, I just most girls suggest starting doing orchids. You start with a fab. Phalaenopsis. This is what it looks like. You see them in the supermarkets. These, see a lot of them. They are really beginners orchids. Yeah. When you become an expert, you still have them, but you move on to to the vandas and all of those fancy ones. But if you could start with one of these you could master the art of orchids. So um, most times you see them in the supermarkets or the department stores, or they're gifted to you by your loved ones. And um, most times you have, what, what I suggest to my growers or my clients, you get a beautiful gift. I know most times they look fancier than this one, because it's a gift for your birthday or something like that. The first thing you have to do, I suggest, if you want to keep growing it, instead of throwing it out after it fades and stop blooming, make sure you look at the bottom to make sure it has holes in it. A lot of times we don't check that and we have these gifted orchids and as soon as the, the bloom is has faded, there goes the plant. Because when you water it, it's not being drained properly. Because the, there's no holes in the bottom. 
so it the water settles in it and then you have root rot yeah okay so root rot is another thing i could talk about <laughs> so um that, you know for beginners i would start with that make sure when you buy your orchids it's been drained it has enough holes in the bottom so when you water it and watering for orchids when it's when it's cold we suggest you water it once a week in the cold season and then in the warmer season twice a week and you're not watering your leaves you're watering the roots because you don't want to have root rot and then the stem uh, or crown rot also do you want the water to run through there yes like i just said um I'm like, yeah, sorry. Then, yes what i would suggest what i was saying most times we buy our orchids they're in these fancy looking continuous plantings the first thing even an experienced orchidist or grower sometimes they don't remember because the pots are so fancy and you're concentrating on nurturing the orchids so you forget to look at the bottom to make sure it had there's a hole or a few in the bottom because I would say sometimes we give these plants, beautiful plants, to people who are not familiar with, you know, growing orchids. And then you keep watering once a week, twice a week, and that water keep building up. And then you're seeing your, your plant just getting droopy. And you keep saying to your friends, I keep, I don't know what's wrong with my orchids. What's wrong with my plants? And they're going to say, oh, what are you doing? Are you one, watering once a week if it's cold or twice a week if it is a warm weather? And you're going to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess what? The comfort is at the bottom. And all, it, it becomes stagnant and all of that. I remember, the, I'm going to switch. These are Hoyas, collectors of orchids, people who collect orchids. They also do Hoyas. And I remember my mom gave us our first Hoya. I could recognize it. She said someone in the elderly community had it and she bought it. And she said she the, the, the Hoya was like 30 years old. And the thing was so stagnant. It become a bonsai. <laughs> yeah, and when I looked, it was a fancy, the planter was fancy, a very expensive planter. And when I check it, it was, ooh, ooh, you don't want to smell that water. So for 30 years, she had that plant. It didn't have any drainage. So the poor plant was not growing. So I took it out and I washed it, but it, it can be salvaged. Um, I mixed um, hydrogen peroxide and I washed the roots and it became healthy again and start blooming. Beautiful plant. So, you know, you make sure your drain, drainage is there and um, you water once or twice a week, depends on the weather. And um, things happen. So you could have root rot, you could realize, you maybe you realize that your roots start in rot because maybe you're putting too much water or whatever reason it is. So how I treat that, I use fungicide and I am not one for getting those expensive ones that's online or in the stores. I, I like to use stuff that's in my, in my household. So what I will use is Epsom salt and when you buy that Epsom salt, the direction is on there. I think it's four tablespoons per mm -hmm. quart of water or gallon. Yeah, a gallon, yes. So the directions is on there. So you go by that. And it doesn't hurt. You, you pull the plant out of all that mess. Get rid of it. Don't keep any of the meat that's in there. And... Um, you wash it off, put 
get under the tap, wash the roots out, use your hands and wash your roots out. And um, what I do with that, make that solution of the Epsom salt, I would soak in it for like overnight. And um, then I take it out, I rinse it out, and um, I, keep it, I keep it again, you know, put it back in the, in the container, but you don't, I don't put it in the meter. And then another, the following day when it's dry, then I will put it in the medium, fresh medium. And that's good. And Epsom salt is also a good fertilizer as well. Hmm. Yes. You don't have to, I'm not saying you, you don't or you shouldn't buy those fancy fertilizer because maybe you're used to it, but your fertilizer for your orchids may just be in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. You know? And it's, they, you know. Yeah, and sometimes, I don't know. Okay, for example, sometimes the leaves, they'll get a little yellow or discolored, you know, you have to watch it. If it seems like it's spreading, as fancy as that leaf may look, it's better to get rid of it because it tends to spread. So again, you use a sterile scissor or a nipper, make sure it's sterile. You could just use some antrogen peroxide, wash it and dry, get it dried after. And, um, I'm sorry I didn't take a demonstration here, but um, you cut the damaged area. It depends if it's, sometimes it's just a little at the tip of the leaf. I try to save it and see how it looks, but it's best to just get rid of the entire leaf. And what's there, remember, even though I say, you know, they're like from the wild, we still have to care for them. So each time you cut with that sterile scissor, it becomes a wound. It's an open wound. So then we have to dress it. And again, I use, I use a little swab and I tip that little area with hydrogen peroxide. And um, I let it dry for a little bit. Yeah. And then cinnamon. Cinnamon is also good. So the hydrogen peroxide will, you know, clean the wound and the cinnamon for me, it dries the, the wound and prevents it from breaking out. Isn't it? Is that the Were you asking? But I didn't want to ask because I was late and you might have covered it. So what if I have a friend, my sister, she uh, has a, uh, she has a orchid and the, there's, there was a flower at the top and then there were leaves, right? The leaves are starting to turn yellow, but it, and it's trying to, it's drying it up. Mm -hmm. okay. What's it drying up, the leaves or the spike? The spike. The spike is drying up, and the leaves are yellow as well. The the leaves are green. Oh, so the, the leaves spike is drying up. But the spike eventually they dry because they bloom. They, it's not lasting. It depends on how dry. Is, is it dry as in being rot or fading? That's what I'm not sure. Yeah, because if they are fading. That's part of the process. Because this will fade, it won't be forever. So eventually, the fading process is that it's going to be dried and withered away. Should she cut it or just leave it like that? What most people do, they wait until it's dry. Because it, like, if you cut it, it's another wound you're putting in the plant if it's still sappy and has liquid in it. So it's best to wait until it's dry. This vandal, you look at it, the, this is where the bloom was. So I'm not one, I like to be 
being natural with my plants. I'm not going to run to say, well, cosmetically, it doesn't look nice, the dried looking thing. It's not properly dried. It still has some to go to be perfectly dried. So what I'll do is to wait until, looking at it, you're like, oh, I don't like to see how it looks. But wait until it's dry, like you could snap it. Sometimes I, may, I allow it to dry where I could just even use my finger and snap it. But it's best to cut it with a sterile, even though it's still dry, cut it with something sterile. And um, this one, and it's, for me, it's good. Because if I'm buying an orchid, and I look at this orchid, I know it's fertile, it's, it's giving blooms, one. And I also look down here, and you'll see where there was another one. There was another spot that dried. So it tells me that it has given twice it has bloomed. And also for the vandal, I know I'm switching, but let's, you know, if you have a question, that will help with the discussion also. And also, when if if it, if you're if it's just blooming for me for the first time, you, if you can tell and predict where the next spike will be, they never spike downwards. The next spike is always upwards. So it's good for you to nurture it, and in order for it to bloom, you have to keep having leaves, new leaves coming out at the top. Because the, the blooms come from between, you know, between the leaves. This one is spiking, it's spiking again, and it's above this one. Whenever you're walking around, I, you know, if you want, I can show you where the spike come from. So, the, what? You have two others, one at the front and one at the back. Two no, 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 this, okay, no, these are roots. These are aerial roots. Oh, those are roots. Yes, so. A lot of times, people may see these little ones coming out and they get excited. Oh, I'm having a spike. No. It's never a spike from the side. No. The spike is always in the leaves. Right. Then you know your orchid is pregnant. <laughs> right? when, it's, when it comes from within the leaves. So it's best to wait until it's dry to cut it because there may still be some sap in it. And if you cut it, it's gonna be a wound that it may get the entire plant infected. And that's the beauty. In order to have, when you start growing orchids, it is an art. It may, as far as non orchid is, it may look tacky to see all these dried stuff on it, or the roots sometimes look this way. But it's something that it's an appreciation. And I get excited over my roots. The roots, yeah, I love my roots. And when I grow an orchid, like this one is spiking. I get excited because it, it spiked onto my care. And then, to be honest, I get expi excited about growing it, the roots and the progress of the plant more than I do about the blooms. Like this one, it's beautiful. But it's like, okay, I'm done with that one. I'm awaiting this spike. Yeah. I don't know if there are any more questions. Yes. You, when you say water, I don't know how much to water. Are you spritzing them? Are you soaking them? How much, how do you judge how much water they need? Um. Okay. You are not over. No, I, don't. I, I try not to do that. I see you. I can do it for myself, but to advise you, well, they say three, three ice cubes, right? Yeah, yeah three. Yeah. But the water, water in it. I guess you wait to make sure that the root is soaked it, and it and it drained through, right? Yes. So it could be a, a beginner orchid roots with the three cubes, irregardless of how big the pot is, or does it depend on the size of the pot? How much liquid you put there? I think they're saying three cubes depends. You could use your.
judgment after you practice the three cubes, but remember that the ice, it doesn't um, drain, it doesn't drain immediately. It, it, you use it because it, it works over a time, period of time. Yeah, so I think most people use, that use the ice, are people that probably are leaving their own for a lengthy period of time. They're not coming back until tomorrow. So they put the ice there. So it will take a little while to melt. So it's like it's keeping the, the plants for them while they are away for extended time. But I, I'm not one for the ice cube. I like to do my stuff and see what I do and make sure it gets enough of what is needed and then I'm done with it for the week. Not for the week, really, I talk to my plants. My sister, my sister think I'm crazy sometimes. All my plants, they have a name, and I address, no matter how many, they have a name. And I, whatever is going on with me, and I feel that energy for that plant, that's the plant I go out in my garden, and I have a conversation with, I complain, and I will tell them what, if someone did me wrong, I'll, I'll talk to them, and they will talk back to me. They'll twinkle with a bloom or something, but I get my energy from my plants. Um, how much, for, you mentioned fertilizer, you mentioned wood chips, what's the ratio? Or? Um, that's another thing. If, when I started doing orchids, I wanted to make sure they have everything, everything. But I noticed most growers now, they're just doing enough for them to cling to. You don't have to fill the pot like some, you know, after you start doing your orchids, you just put enough in there to keep it, to get it straight and sturdy in the pot. You're talking about the fertilizer? No, <laughs> the chips, the, the chips. chips. Okay. okay, for the fertilizer, you, you fertilize once a week, weekly. You a weak mixture and you do it once per week. A liquid fertilizer you're referring to? Yeah, liquid fertilizer, whichever one. But the liquid fertilizer, if you go to the store and you, for example, you go to Old Depot, not this that's not a a free ad, but if you go there and you ask someone, where can I find the fertilizer for your orchids? And they direct you there, and then you see a couple of whichever one you choose. The direction is there, how to mix it, but it's once per week because the orchids they don't need much. They take care of themselves. The fertilizers we we do it to boost a little growth or spike a little more, but really they may give us repeated blooms sometimes. But really, they're going to bloom on the, on your own time. Most you, of if you use the Epsom salt solution that you suggested, you just water once a week with the diluted yes. the water with the Epsom salt. Yes. And you don't need a, another fertilizer, no, you correct? No. Uh, you you can, but the, the Epsom salt is good. It works. Are there special orchid fertilizers? Or Generic. Yes, yes. There, if you if you are one for, for going for fertilizers, there are special ones because um, I have a collection of the. They say that's the largest species of orchids, the Gramatophyllium, and I was using um, I was introduced to a, a fertilizer that has a lot of iron in it, and they didn't like the iron. So I had to hold it back. So as you go, you realize, but I would say take baby steps, take baby steps and use simple things. And then you could adventure with whatever being suggested to you. So if that doesn't work, you go back to your simple stuff. Yeah. What is this? What is it doing? Okay. All right. So this is, this is an example. Okay, the leaf is doing well so far, but look at the bottom. No bottom. Yes, so this is what I was explaining. You see the bottom? Yeah, I 
think the hole is there, but I'm not sure why they tend to put the la this label over the hole. Maybe there's no <laughs> hole in that. <laughs> so, can I take the label off? Eventually, you'll have to cut. 